Uh, tear down time. This is a Casio FX260 Solar 2. I was uh, watching a recent video from the EEV blog, one of my favorite YouTube channels, and uh, he reviewed this calculator, but he didn't really tear it down. Let's uh, take the integrated circuit off the uh, assembly and uh, de-encapsulate it and take a look at it. So a solar calculator, of course, has a solar cell, uh, and this is really tiny. Uh, to give some sense of just how tiny it is, uh, let's do a silly experiment. Okay, silly ways to power up a solar calculator. I've removed the solar panel, and uh, this is a Peltier module uh, on a heat sink. And if I put some ice cubes on top, I can get a ice cube powered calculator. Yep, see, it comes up and uh, entirely functional. The nice thing about these calculators, they draw such little amounts of power, it's fairly easy to scavenge enough power to run a calculator uh, quite successfully. So, <laughs> there you go, an ice cube powered calculator. Not so practical. So here's the controller that was under that black epoxy blob. It's just a little chunk of silicon sitting upon this white adhesive tape. There was the FX260 before this, so this is the uh, second rev, rev of the product. I think they've probably done a die shrink. Uh, the way to figure that out, of course, is to uh, go under the microscope and take some photographs of the silicon die. Let's do that next. If you uh, de-encapsulate it, that means uh, removing the epoxy, you end up with a photograph of the actual silicon die. And this is it here. Now, just glancing at this, I can tell it's a microprocessor-based design. What we have here are some round blocks. These are ROM blocks here, which, of course, would be very appropriate for a CPU section. And that'll live here in the digital logic area. Now, you can't see the actual processor structure because it runs so slow, they just laid it out as a, a gate array. Coming around here, we can see the analog functions. There's going to be an LCD driver. It needs a fairly high voltage. Since the chip is powered by a fairly... Um, unregulated solar cell, you'll have a voltage regulator on the chip. I think this is something called a ring oscillator, we'll come back to that in a second. The golden color is basically the two top metal layers that connects all of the uh, silicon together. Now if we uh, strip that, we can get uh, what's known as a polysilicon layer. So uh, here's the RAMs. These, by the way, are 64 bytes uh, in size, so you're looking at 256 bytes. Um, the ROM array is considerably higher. I suspect Casio uses this silicon for uh, probably a lot of their products. You can see here now that there's three very distinct digital sections. Let us come back to the metallization layer. You can see there is metal hiding this one. They put an entire metal here, making it difficult to define what you're looking at here. But uh, this is what that area is. And now, of course, you can also now see the analog blocks in, in much clearer detail. And uh, here, for example, the metal hasn't quite been stripped away. And same thing up here. Uh, but this is what looks as uh, polysilicon. You can now see the I.O. ring quite strongly uh, with all of its protection diodes and drivers. So this area of the chip here was really interesting to my eye. It's, uh, I think it's actually an oscillator. Uh, this chip, of course, has to self-clock. There was no crystal on the actual assembly, so that's created a, a clocking source. And I think this might be just a series of uh, knot gates uh, put together. And if I, I zoom in a bit further, you can see a very regular structure, uh, which kind of implies it's the same thing going on and on. And all I can think of is that it would be a really excellent choice for um, a ring oscillator. The other possibility is potentially a voltage multiplier, but I'm um, not sure. Uh, let's see, no real markings of the chip telling me the provenance or the age of it, just 905-010, and then another number down here, which don't track to anything in particular. Uh, here we're looking at the, um, the ROM array here, um, and of course there would have been metal on top of this. So you can see it's, a, it's fairly dense, I've zoomed quite far in. So I'm sure we're looking at kilobytes of uh, storage space. Here's the uh, bottoms of the, one of the RAMs. You can see, of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You really get the sense, you know, you must be looking at uh, something which is uh, eight bits wide. And uh, here we have actually the zoom in of the gatorade area. This is the polysilicon. You can see the, um, the fusion. And then what would happen is there would be metal on top of this. And of course, that would create the connectivity. This actually isn't a really sophisticated process, no, the fact that I can see this visually uh, tells me we're still looking at a fairly old node. But coming back to the uh, little uh, solar panel, you can see it looks like there's actually four cells. I wonder if that allows one cell to be covered up without the output of the whole uh, array dropping. So you can sort of see that um, just a very faint metallization behind. So uh, even the solar cell is actually relatively sophisticated, uh, even though it's such a small little component. So a quick trip to the uh, drill press, and I can uh, take those four uh, heat stakes out fairly easily, and uh, expose the classics. Uh, the little black buttons here are mildly resistive, they're sort of the kilo ohm range. Let's let the calculator settle here, seven or so kilo ohms. 
And then surprisingly, the uh, ink on the actual uh, conductive pads here is, is quite conductive. It actually goes down to um, uh, almost a zero ohm. So, and of course, that's how the cochlear senses a, a button press. So, well, it just leaves the circuit board. You can see when I de-encapsulated, I took a pair of shears and I actually cut the circuit board out so I could extract it. And when I dissolved uh, the epoxy, I'm always left with the actual fiber. And it's just a classic uh, basket weave. So this is what's inside of all circuit boards. And that's why they're known as fiberglass boards, because there's that fiberglass weave. And then the epoxy squeezed around it, and then the copper sheets on top of that. So, uh, as always, if you want to take a look at photographs of this assembly, I have uh, the die photographs on my blog, electronupdate.blogspot.com.